Hi, everybody. It's Drew Safer's Idiocracy. Um, it is really nice outside today, so I wanted to make my video outside. Um, as you saw, I did my giveaway video today as well. Um, Luna was in that video, and I did that especially for Sabrina and her son. I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I did it for everybody, but I know Sabrina and her son love my dog, so um, I hope you enjoyed that, Sabrina. Um, I, um, uh, got back from my, uh, grandma's funeral yesterday and it's been made painfully clear by, um, some people that they do not appreciate my cussing. So I am going to make an effort to not cuss so much in my videos and, um, I will do my best. So I know I'm vulgar and, um, it's part of my aesthetic, um, but, I know it's off-putting, and I'm here for the people. Um, I try to be unapologetically myself, um, and part of that um, is just being me. But I'm also wanting to get people to um, appreciate my channel, and I need to be there for everybody. So um, I am going to work on cussing not at, well, not cussing at all, but I know they will sometimes slip out. So I hope people will appreciate that I'm trying. Um, sometimes when something surprising happens and I don't mean for it to happen, I will say the F my face thing. Um, it's, it's my oops expletive and I don't mean for it to come out. It just happens. So if that one happens, just know I don't mean it. I will try to keep it to a minimum. With that said, I hope you appreciate that I am trying. Um, I am in scrubs today because I took my second attempt at a CNA skills test. Um, I decided to keep wearing them so I could talk about that. Um, I took a CNA class uh, in January and I um, had to retake the skills test because the first time I failed it because if you fail the blood pressure, uh, on the skills test, you failed the whole thing. So even though I got a 100% on everything else, I failed uh, the whole test. Because uh, on the written, I got a 90, which was the highest score they've ever gotten from anybody on the written. So, <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty awesome. I know. You know what? Stop it, you guys. Stop clapping. I know, right? Oh, okay. It's, it's nice to get applause. So, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So stop clapping already. Okay. I get it. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I was so nervous today. I, I mean, nervous one, because I got the same proctor for the test and two, I got the same actress for the test and to get a blood pressure on her was so difficult but i finally discovered why it was so difficult her blood pressure was so freaking i said freaking low that she should be in a hospital what i thought i saw and heard the first time was i don't know like the the needle was bouncing but I didn't hear anything. What I thought I heard must have been my finger making a noise on the stethoscope. Because when it finally, when I could finally hear a beat, it was at like 78 or 80 uh, for the top number. And I was like, you, I, I thought my blood pressure, I take a blood pressure medication for my ADHD. It's called Intunov. It's, um, it's supposed to help with hyperactivity. And um, it was... Mine averages anywhere from 100 to 110. Well, 100 to like, I've, I've gotten as low as like 96 to like 106 for the top number. And then like 60 to 68 for the bottom. And um, I thought mine was low. Um, I got 78 over 58 after doing it like eight or nine times. And I pray that that was correct. Because one time when I stopped, I thought I wasn't pressing hard enough with the stethoscope. So I was like, ugh! And the proctor said, um, I don't think you waited long enough for the for the bottom number. And I was like, what? I thought I was, I didn't say it. But in my head, I was like, I thought 
I wasn't pressing hard enough to hear her pulse. Because I saw the needle bouncing, but I couldn't hear anything. So finally, the last time, I pressed hard and I sat and I waited and, and, and made sure there was, there was no noise. I, I, and I, I, I could finally hear it. And I saw the needle bounce at 70, or saw it bounce and heard it at 78. And it's, excuse me, excuse me. I hope nobody's offended by burps because I cannot guarantee I'm not going to burp. Last night on my live stream, I burped a whole bunch. And on the live stream with Derek the Nitwit, I burped a whole bunch because I was drinking soda. Luna, do not roll around in the grass. Oh, now you're covered. Oh, but she looks so happy. She looks so happy. I'll bring her up in this video too. I like having special guests. Um, but anyway, um, damn it, I lost my train of thought. I thought she was getting into something. Um, bottom number... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the bottom number, 58. I got 78 over 58. And um, it was just, I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was so low. Like, I've never taken a blood pressure that low. And I'm 100% like, I'm sure that that's, what it was, but I was like, and I said to the proctor, I was like, if that's what it is, shouldn't she be in the hospital? I think if it's below 60, she should be in the hospital. That was an insanely low blood pressure in my book. And I was just like, that better be correct. If I fail this test again because of the blood pressure, I'm going to be so upset. And I had harder skills this time. Last time my skills were so easy. They were so easy, but I, I was flubbing up the skills left and right because I was so worried about that blood pressure. I was so worried. Oh, like all I wanted to do was scream every time, every time. And she had given me pointers before I went in because I was told her how nervous I was about the blood pressure. And she said, don't focus on where you think it should be. Just listen. And I should have just done that. But instead, I was like waiting for it to start beating around 120 to 110. And so when it got below 90 and I couldn't hear anything, I thought I was doing it wrong. So I just decided those last couple times, I was like, all right, I'm just going to sit here until I hear something. And I didn't hear it until 78. And I was like, there's no way. Her blood pressure is 78 over 58. But I was like, that's what I heard. So I'm writing it down. I was like, I was like, that's, that's what I heard. So it's, it's about what you hear, not about what you think it is. So if she heard that too, that's all that matters. So, oh, oh. Luna looks so cute out in the, it's, I'm, I'm going to show you her out in the grass. Look at her. She's just hanging out in the sun. This is her favorite thing to do when it's nice out. Can I zoom in? No, I cannot. Oh, she's my little girl. And I have, I'm sitting so the um, trees and the, the pasture behind us are, um, are there. So if the neighbor's animals come out, um, we can see them as well. Cause that last video that I did whenever I was out here, um, like 20 minutes after I completed the video, they came out. I was so mad. I was like, Oh, we could, the, the donkeys were brain. I was like, Oh, they could have seen the donkeys. They're so cute. Like they're, they're so tiny and they come up to the vents and everything. It's so fun. Um, so Whenever there's leaves on the trees, the goats will climb the trees and get to the, the branches so they can eat the leaves. London Fog. And um, H, you know who you are, H. 
Um, I need to explain this for people who don't know what it is because they don't watch all my videos or my live streams. Um, Noni Mae Crochet um, was in a live stream with Derek and I one time. And every time that I would vape, she would put in the chat, London Fog, usually in all caps. So every time I vape and blow my smoke, I say London Fog. I usually sing it or I go, London Fog. You're here on the London Fog Z1077 with Drusifer's Idiocracy. Um, or if it's on NPR, you're with Smith and E. Clamp on NPR with the London Fog Show. You're here on NPR with Smith and E. Clamp listening to London Fog. So, um, that's, that's my shtick. Um, oh, I just spit, was it on my mouth? Ooh, this tank is leaking. So I bought a new tank today. Um, but I want to use up all the juice in here before I switch to my new tank. Um, I just spit juice all over my arm because it was on my mouth. Gross. Um, anyways, the test. Um, I am super nervous because I find out at approximately 3 p.m. tomorrow. So I have about 24 hours of freaking out if that 78 over 58 was correct. Um, I'm pretty sure the rest of the um, skills I did okay enough on that I passed them. Some of them I flubbed some stuff up. But as long as you say I was supposed to do this, um, they... they give you the points um so i'm just worried about that blood pressure because oh my god it's 130 dollars to take it over again so um anyway i'm i'm uh, so ready to start working again because i need a job and all other attempts at getting one up to now has been fruitless um my parents are upset with me for numerous reasons, and it's just really frustrating. Um, I can't seem to make right decisions in their minds, so getting a CNA job would be great. Um, although with what's going on with the coronavirus, that's kind of freaky to think about getting a job in a hospital, because... Um, you know, being HIV positive, that's very scary to think that I would be on the front lines if uh, the coronavirus spreads here to the local to the Oklahoma City area. Um, I'm, you know, HIV positive, and I, while well, my, my immune system is in great health, who knows what would happen if I caught the coronavirus? I I don't know how it works on. On people with HIV. I don't think, I don't know what it's done to people in Asia who have HIV. Because they say it, people who have compromised immune system have died, but I don't know if that includes people who are HIV positive and are on meds. Um, so I am concerned. And um, I will, of course, if people start getting sick here in Oklahoma City, I will shave my beard. Um, I don't know about the mustache. Um, I will, of course, start wearing the proper mask. I'll tr have to trim my mustache for it to fit under a mask. And I'm sure in the hospital, everybody will have to wear those masks. So, you know, I'm pretty sure there's ways of them protecting healthcare workers if and when that will start happening. Not if, when that starts happening. Because um, people fly and... It's already started in St. Louis, as uh, uh, Noni May pointed out, mama, butter mama. So it's here, so we need to be prepared. Um, I chose becoming a CNA because I want to become a nurse, um, and not just any nurse. I want to become a psych nurse practitioner. Um, I've been someone who suffers from mental illness, I want to help others, and I've, um, I want to specifically work in uh, rehab centers. I 
have um, decided that being an addict myself, I want to give back to those who need it. And when I was in rehab this last time, there was an awesome nurse practitioner who, um, who helps me. There were actually two who helped me, but I mainly saw one. And um, it was wonderful, the aid that I got from them. And I think it would be the best thing that I could do to give back to people who need it. Um, I've, I had one person in my life for a short while. They ended up doing a lot of harm to me, but, but something that they said struck a chord in me and they said, whatever you do with your life, do something that does good. And while they were a drug addict who did a lot of harm to me psychologically and emotionally and physically, um, I take that to heart and that I do need to do something with my life that helps others. Um, and so it's just, that's what I've decided I want to do. Um, I don't want to work private practice. Um, that would be something that would help others as well. Um, but I, I would like to go in and work in a facility helping addicts start their start the way to getting better. Um, do things that are going to make people feel better so they can become better people. Um, because what uh, Jerry did for me was amazing. Put me in a headspace so I could feel better, go to groups so I could get better. The first week I was in treatment, I could barely get out of bed. I couldn't come out of my room. I didn't want to be around anybody. And stuff that she did for me, just saying she was going to do it, helped me. Um, but then I actually, the, the medicine I was taking helped a lot. But it was just having somebody there to say, I'm sorry that you're going through that. That sucks. Here, let me try this for you. We'll see if that makes you feel better. And I want to be that somebody for somebody else. Because I know what it's like. And I want to do that. Um, it's... I know a lot of you probably can't identify with my specific example. But I know a lot of you know you've had some dark time in your life. And... You know what it's like to have, to be down and out and to want to help others not be like that or to help them out of a bad situation that they're in. So that's why I want to become a nurse practitioner. So becoming a CNA is the first step out of many steps. So CNA, RN, BSN, psych nurse practitioner. So I have a long way to go. I'm going to be into my 40s before I ever start working as a nurse practitioner. So I'll probably retire about the time that I die, um, which is okay. Um, I don't know if I would fare well in retirement. I haven't really fared well not working much. So um, I think I'm someone who needs to learn how to work and survive in the real world. Um, as I've shared in the past, and to family members and friends who are seeing this, um, I ask you to please keep it from my parents, because I don't know if my parents will ever watch this, but working as an escort for 12 years um, really took its toll on me. I got accustomed to having large amounts of money for very little work. It's really affected me psychologically and... Um, I mean, psychologically, emotionally, um, occupationally, um, you know, for the longest time, I, I didn't like working because it's like, why make a hundred dollars a day at a job when I can make $600 a day doing something that takes little effort, you know? So it, it took a long time to shake myself of that mentality, um, So it was, it was really hard to, to do that. Um, so I'm not becoming a nurse practitioner because of the money. 
uh, the money will be awesome. I'm not going to lie, but I want to do something where I can make the, the biggest impacts on the most people um, and hopefully make people proud of me for once. Um, so I, I'm just kind of sick of being the, the screw up. And I'm sorry this video is so serious. I'm usually a lot more funny. Um, but I guess I do want to show you that I do have a serious side. And I'm not always the cussing, crazy, off-the-wall person. And I can talk without going in a bajillion directions. Um, although I still am. <laughs> I know I am. Oh, London Fog! But... Um, I guess I wanted to keep it serious because addiction is a serious subject. Um, the coronavirus is a serious subject and, um, it's, and I feel serious about this stupid freaking, I almost, I almost let it slip. You guys, I almost said the F bomb, this freaking CNA test has me all bajiggity. And so if you guys can send me some love in the comments or I'll put my, e I always put my email in this description. If you can email me some memes and lighten my spirits because, oh my God, I just, I love memes. I, if you saw my Facebook, well, some of you would probably be, be disgusted. Um, I put, I put nothing but funny stuff in my Facebook feed because I am all about putting positivity out there. I enjoy making people laugh. If, if I can do anything I, is make someone smile. I want people to have a good day and, um, and feel better. And when I got out of rehab and I posted my first couple of funny stuff, I got an influx of messages or uh, in the comments. Of, I'm so happy you're back. I missed your posts. I'm like, and it was just nothing but that. And I, it made me feel good to feel that love of being missed and to be touched that so many people love my ridiculousness. Um, cause it'll be, it's, it'll be some of the stupidest stuff, but sometimes I post some pretty racy stuff too. Um, and nobody gets offended and people just love the stupid stuff that makes me laugh. I have a very twisted sense of humor. I have a very dark and twisted sense of humor. So it's, it'll be all over the place, but people just find it endearing. And I love that because I am very weird, very goofy, and people appreciate that. And for every one person who does not, there's at least two or three who do. And um, that's good enough for me. So um, I'm sorry for making this video so serious. Um, I know it's not my norm, but um, I also want to do a reminder that I have posted my video for my giveaway. So please check that out. Uh, like and subscribe, um, and please give it a share. Give a share for this one, too, and um, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I go before you always. Come, follow me. Um, I know that was probably a little sacrilegious, but, um, you know, that's just me. Uh, be good to yourself. Among uh, above all, be good to yourself. Um, be good to others, and uh, do something nice for somebody today. You'll be glad you did. Bye bye.